with God. If you're miserable, stay home. Don't tell nobody you're a Christian. Go in your closet, get delivered. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's called the closet of deliverance. Glory to God. You know there's something that happens every time when we get in God's presence? It's called a change of heart. Everyone say change of heart. The enemy wants to change your heart. God wants to change our heart. So there's a battle over your heart. Remember, your heart is the core of every desire. You don't make choices or decisions or anything else without a desire. Amen? Everything is associated with a desire in our life. Whether it's physical, spiritual, financial, there's always a choice that must be made. Now, because your heart is the core of all desire, in your heart is the place where choices are made. And your heart knows what's right and what's wrong. Amen? So choices come from your heart. Decisions come from your mind. There's two different things. Too many people are making choices from their mind and they can't. They're making wrong decisions. Does everybody understand? Because there's all kinds of things available to me and you. But there's only one true choice. But you can make another choice that can cause problems. So the enemy's always trying to get you to, uh, in a place of change of heart. In other words, what changed your heart? What changed your desire? We must look at this all the time. Because these are things that influence me and you. How many times people are doing something to bring a self false fulfillment because of a change of heart? All of a sudden, your people are going down the right path, and then there's a comes of a change of heart, and they go in a different direction. It's all because the enemy comes to impart something to change the heart and the course of the heart. Because there's only the will of God or the will of man. Amen? Which is the will of the devil. Is everybody okay? Everyone say change of heart. So again, it's in God's presence that is essential to keep our heart changed towards him. The more you lack God's presence, the more your heart's going to change away from him. It will drift Go astray. I don't understand why people still don't get this. You can beat them over the head and they still don't get it. It's incredible to me. I mean, how stupid can we be and still breathe? Hello? Think about this. Every time something comes in our life that causes a struggle or problem, it's because of the lack of God's presence, because of the lack of what? Change of heart. That heart must be changed all the time. Because it's always influence. It must be cleansed and purified all the time. Or we'll drift and go off the wrong path and not even know it until there's destruction coming or things begin to happen. We begin to touch on clean things. We begin to say things we shouldn't, associate with people we shouldn't, looking for something that's false. First Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 1. Glory. Change of heart. Is everybody there? First Peter chapter 1. Verse 3. Let's speak it together. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you. For you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time or last days. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, even if need be, you have been grieved by various trials or you have been 
challenged by various trials to check your what? That the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. In other words, the genuineness of your faith, forever, what, attached into the heavenlies your genuineness of your connection, your genuineness of your relationship. In other words, your loyalty. There's a few things. Your loyalty, your purity, your sanctification, your commitment. I'm going to repeat it. Your loyalty. He's checking your loyalty. He's checking your purity. He's checking your sanctification. He's checking your commitment. He's checking your detailed perception. Especially, you will be challenged. We are challenged in these last days. His purpose is to position the faithful for what is getting ready to come. He knows these individuals can overcome anything. Again, this will involve your choices and decisions influenced by the desires of your heart. Because God is searching for a steadfast heart. One that's unchangeable. Steadfast according to his way and not anyone else's way. Knows that nothing can influence that individual. And Galatians chapter 3. Galatians 3. Galatians 3, verse 1, change of heart. Think about how many heart changes we've had. Getting ready to do the right thing, then God influenced. No, I ain't doing it. How many times that the Holy Spirit would say something, and it was like, nah. Then he just backs off, and he lets the chorus run. But then we finally got a heart change by the Holy Spirit. See, when there's a heart change by the enemy, there's destruction at the end. When there's a heart change by the Holy Spirit, there's life at the end. There's prosperity. There's blessings. There's victory. See, you may all of a sudden fall into a heart change, but quickly realize that something's affecting you. No, because in the Spirit, you're able to see things that happen to the end. Not all the way, but seeing things through. So when you make a decision, the Holy Spirit's going to show you what's coming. Does everybody get it? The decisions and that choice, if it's a decision out of their mind, it's dangerous. If it's a choice out of the heart, it's usually correct. But again, your heart knows what's right and what's wrong, what's righteous and unrighteous. Your heart knows. God's placed it in you and me. Because he gave us a what? New heart. Not a heart of stone. Galatians 3 verse 1. Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? <laughs> or who or what has changed your heart? Does anybody get it? That you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This I only want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, in other words, deceived, bewitched, having your heart changed, having to be gone in the Spirit, 
Are you now being perfected in the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you works miracles among you. Does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore, know that only those who are of the faith are sons of Abraham. And the Scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. O oh, Galatians, who or what has changed your heart of choice from living in the spirit to living in the flesh? That was the end result. A change of heart, things that influence this change must be exposed and removed. In Psalm 112. So the enemy is always trying to set a trap to change a heart. So that bitterness, unforgiveness, offense, rejection, everything, anything that can happen in any way whatsoever to cause a heart change. That's his object. That's his mission. And that's what he wants every single one to get a heart change, to fulfill his will and not the will of the Lord. In verse 1, Psalm 112, verse 1. Is everybody there? Praise the Lord. Blesses the man who what? Fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house. And his righteousness endures forever. Unto the upright, these arises, arise light arises light and darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion, discretion or honesty. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is what? His heart is what? Steadfast, trusting in the Lord. In other words, it's unchanged. His heart is established. He will not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. Maintaining a steadfast heart of choice that pleases God. Avoiding any harmful, selfish, rebellion, sinful change of heart. Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36, verse 25. Is everybody there? Praise God. Anybody there? Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's speak it. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, says the Lord, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness, from all of your, from all of your idols. What can be your worst idol? You. Amen. Yourself. So what is the big problem then? The inability to deny an individual self at every choice or decision. That's the problem. Does everybody get it? Why? Because that's the idol. He said, verse 26, I will give you a what? A new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and what? And do them. Wow. 
He's going to cleanse us from filthiness of sin and idols of self. And again, it's because the inability to deny self at every choice and decision or desire. The inability to deny self at every choice, decision, or desire causes a change of heart. That is the problem. Because the individual wants self first instead of God first. And again, that's all because of a lack of what? God's presence. And, and again, you can come and worship, 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 and still not allow God to deal with every part of your being. You must allow the Spirit to have access to everything. It says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. So then why people are still being bound, even though they pray in tongues and do all kinds of gifts of the Spirit and still bound? Because they're not allowing the Spirit of God to take possession. They may say it, but then they resist it. It's like inviting someone over to come for dinner and shutting the door on them before they, so they can't get in. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 2. Verse 15. Glory. Change of heart. Look at how many hearts have been changed globally. My goodness. To deception and destruction. False doctrines, doctrines of demons. These are all heart changes. People that you were walking with at one time. Friends, brothers and sisters. Now I've gotten a heart change because of the voice of the stranger and are on a road of destruction. They don't know it yet. They're still talking about how God's blessed them and all kinds of other stuff. But they're on the wrong road of destruction. They don't know it. Verse 15. Do not what? Love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. It's of the what? And the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Now lust is an overwhelming desire. Amen. Living under Satan's <laughs> torment, <laughs> lust. Lust is not love. And, and so in this, there's three categories of overwhelming desires. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. It is in, its purpose is to influence. The Father says it's not of him, so it's of who? The devil, the powers of darkness. So they're trying to bring an influence of change of heart. Because remember, the heart is the core of all desire. And lust is nothing but an overwhelming desire. Amen? Remember, the inability to deny self against all choices, decisions, and desires from the powers of the darkness will always cause a coarse change. A change of heart influenced by the enemy even if it doesn't seem evil, he can still influence a change of heart. Even though it doesn't seem evil. See, if it's not God's time, it's not God's will. So it might not seem evil, but it's still a heart change. So there's a heart set on something that's out of God's time. That brings a person on another course that the end is destruction. This is how the enemy plays, man. And until we get an understanding of how he plays, you will be easily deceived all the time. You'll still, still live by how you feel. This is how I feel. Well, you don't know how I feel. I don't care. I don't want to know. I want to know whether you know the truth and you're su submitting to the truth and what this word of God says. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, the influence of the Spirit of God brings a blessings, a course of life. The influence of the enemy will bring a course of destruction. Why? Because of a heart change. Now your desires are different. Do you ever notice when somebody backslides, all the desires come back to what they used to be. Now they hang around with people with the same desires. It's all because of a heart change. 
people that used or fornicate or whatever or whatever they did it prior, they go back to those things. Because of a what? Heart change. Matthew 6. Matthew 6. See, when the enemy gets a person into a heart change, then he promotes pride. Because pride will protect that change. There's reasoning, justification, and blame to keep that change. So what's got to happen, it's got to be exposed. Again, it's got to be exposed and removed. There's got to be a place of humility and humbleness and willing to receive correction, direction, and even chastening from the Spirit of God to remove what is affecting that heart change until that heart is changed according to the will of God and brought back on that right course. Matthew 6, 19. Let's speak it. Do not lay up your... For yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Now, what are treasures? Desires. Does everybody see that? Just don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. In other words, desires that you've accumulated. Verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures or desires that what? Are in heaven. Where neither moth and rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your what? Your heart will be. In other words, your treasure is associated with your heart because these are desires. It says that the lamp of the body is the what? Is anybody there? I. Okay, now he begins, remember, the treasure the desires of your heart. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, lust of money, lust of self, all of this. The lamp of the body is your what? Eye. He's warning us now. Lust of the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. Hello. Yeah, but if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of what? Darkness. Change of heart. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? He says, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve man and money. So he's talking about loss of the eye, loss of money, desires. Therefore I say to you, do not what? Do not worry. Do not be, listen, do not fear. Do not be anxious. Those things will cause a change of heart. Therefore, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Again, loss of the eye to change the heart, loss of money, desire for money. Look, at, I want everybody to be wealthy, but <laughs> the money should not be a selfish ambition. It should be a kingdom ambition. Loss of the flesh, fear, loss of worry, fear, anxiety. People are anxious. Causes all change of heart. And again, then if there's a change of heart, it's going to cause a change of direction. One path is going to lead to destruction. Another path is going to lead to life. Remember, the enemy's attempt is to change your heart. To impart, plant a seed of lust, a desire for something that's going to change your heart because it doesn't change until you agree with it. 1 Kings chapter 11. First Kings chapter 11. Hallelujah. Everybody getting this? Warning, warning, warning. Come on, kingies. 
Glory. Hallelujah. First Kings chapter 11. I know it's in here somewhere. I think the kings took off. And starting at verse 1. Everybody here knows someone at some time that had a change of heart. Even yourself. You know you had a change of heart. But you know, we never took the time or found out why did my heart change. It always goes back to the same thing. Who told me that and where would you come from, you know? How did I let a change of heart happen? Just one simple agreement with the enemy. And then people will fight for that change of heart when it's, when it's bound by lust. Man, they'll fight for it. They'll kill for it. They steal. They do everything else for it to fulfill that desire. A change of heart is nothing different than an addict. When people become addicted, what is addiction? An overwhelming what? Desire. It's an overwhelming desire. You know, some people have never done anything I've talked to so many people. I've never, was, they would tell me they were never involved in pornography. They tried it one time, poof, gone. They tried crack one time, poof, gone. It only took one time to try it to take them out. Does everybody understand? I'm not saying that happens with everyone. Someone will continue to try until it takes them out. In verse 1, let's speak it together. Hallelujah. <laughs> but King Solomon loved many foreign women. Boy. As well as the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Adamites, Sidonites, Hittites, from the nations of whom the Lord has said to the children of Israel, you shall not intermarry with them, nor they with you. Surely they will turn away your hearts after their gods. Solomon clung to these in lust, not love. And he had 700 wives. That boy was busy. Princesses and 300 concubines. He never slept. And his wives turned away his heart. For it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart away after other gods and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God as was the, the heart of his father David. Does everybody see that? The lust turned away his heart. Now remember, Saul, King Saul, when he got in God's presence, it turned his heart towards the Lord. It doesn't take much to turn a person's heart. Just a simple agreement. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Does everybody understand? Solomon's change of heart influenced by lust. <laughs> Again, the mind or the soul analyzes. Amen? It's called decision. What decision I'm going to make? Analyzes. But the heart chooses what is right or wrong. And Jeremiah 17. In verse 5. <clears throat> Hallelujah. When you have agreed with the change of heart from the enemy and you recognize it, you must repent. If there's no repentance, there's no turning. Amen? I've seen many people blow it, fall, and do all kinds of stuff, and the only thing they want is help, but not willing to repent. 
They get no help. In verse 5, thus says the Lord. Is everybody there? Curse is the man who what? Trusts in man. <laughs> and makes flesh his strength. Whose heart departs from the Lord. That person is what? Cursed. So think about when a person make, does, got, is involved in a change of heart. Is he blessed or cursed? Cursed. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert. Look at this next one. And shall not see when what? Good comes. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. In other words, will never be able to get filled with the Spirit. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not what? Fear. Why? Because fear causes a what? Change of heart. When he, when he comes, but its leaf will be green, and he will not be what? Anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is the most deceptive, deceitful above all things, and manipulated, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind. Does everybody see that? So he's test. listen, he is searching the what? The heart, choice. And he's testing the mind of what? Decision. Even to give everyone according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. So your choices and decisions that you make are accounted before God. Never lost. And there must be repentance for the wrong ones. Amen? So it's put under the blood. Or you will reap what you sow. Hallelujah. Remember, the heart is the core of all desire. It can be deceived by the influence from the enemies of lust to those unable, unable to deny self at every choice, desire, and decision. They're unable to deny themselves. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 5. When an individual is unable to deny themselves, the first responses out of themselves is usually, well, this is how I feel. This is how I feel. Because they can't deny themselves. They're unable to. They do not have the ability to because they're still living out of their emotion. And that means pride is still ruling their life. Jeremiah 5.20. Let's speak it. Declare this to the house of Jacob and proclaim it to Judah, saying, I, Hear this now, O foolish people, without understanding, who have eyes and see not, and who have ears and hear not. Do you not fear me, says the Lord? Will you not tremble at my presence, who have placed the sand as the bound of the sea, by perpetual decree that it cannot pass beyond it? And though its waves toss to and fro, yet they cannot prevail. Though they roar, yet they cannot pass over it. But this people has a what? Defiant and rebellious heart. They have revolted and departed. They do not say in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God, who gives rain both the former and latter rain in its season. He reserves for us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned these things away and your sins have withheld good from you. Why? Because you're cursed. Defined and rebellious hearts, God withholds the good to come. He gives you what you need, but he will never give you abundance. Hebrews chapter 3. In verse 7, please. Hebrews 3, verse 7. Change of heart. 
Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you will what? Hear His voice. Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. In the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me and tried me. They saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said they always go astray in their heart. In other words, they always get caught up in a change of heart. They have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you can be, uh, have been hardened through the deceitfulness of sin and lust. For we have become partakers of Christ if we do what? If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end, in other words, steadfast heart. While it is said, today you, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. A stray in heart. Why? Why did a stray of heart? Because they got a, cha a, a change of heart. They agreed with something from the enemy. James 1. James 1, 12. Blessed is the man who endures what? Temptation attacks. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he's tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires. Now where are your desires? And your heart. And then what? Enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Now sin is the presence of evil. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every precious gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Temptation is to bring a change of heart. The, when it comes from the enemy, it's to bring a change of heart. So the enemy tempts, the Holy Spirit convicts. So everybody got it. The enemy does what? Tempts. He entices. But the Holy Spirit brings conviction so that there is a change of heart. So we don't go down that path of destruction. 2 Timothy 2. There are many change of hearts these days. And much of it is influenced by fear. Amen? With all sicknesses and diseases that's going on. and Influence of the media, music, and so forth. And technology is influencing change of hearts. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a what? A vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also their youthful what? Lusts. But pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, and those who call on the Lord with, out of a what? Pure heart. So be careful who you associate with. And avoid foolish and ignorant disputes. Stop gossiping, backbiting, and criticizing, knowing that they generate strife. Why? Because what you sow is what you reap. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in what? In humility, not pride. Correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been capt taken captive to do the will of the enemy. Change of heart, change of heart. Psalm 24. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
We get many calls from people desiring to come into the discipleship house and get freed up. And they never show up. <laughs> Change of heart. It's like a 50-50 chance. <laughs> if everyone that said they were coming, we'd be overflowed. <laughs> but the enemy has a way of changing the heart. Amen? In verse 3, let's speak it. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord and who may stand in this holy place? He who has clean hands and a what? Pure heart. So when there's a change of heart, does God allow you into his presence? No, not without repentance. Amen? Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol. Okay. So we see two things again. The heart, the mind is the soul. Part of the soul, right? The heart is a place of what? Choice. The mind, the soul is a part of the decision. So he said, who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who what? Seek him and who seek your face. And I'm going to close at 1 John chapter 5. You know, I know many people that are very wealthy, have many cars, big houses, and mansions. But they are humble, servants of the Lord. And what they have, they've given more of. Because they have not had a heart change towards enemy. They've had a heart change towards righteousness. And God has blessed them tremendously, tremendously. They stayed the course. You know, many times the enemy will try to cause a heart change just in area. And now this may stra sound strange, but look for something. Cause a look for something. Believe it. How many of y'all know that we are, at one time we thought it was the grass was greener on the other side, that old saying, amen. But it really isn't. Grass is grass. Hello. <laughs> All depends whether it's watered or not. <laughs> but again, the enemy tries to change of heart by making a false impression that something is better, either somewhere else with someone else or a purchase of something else. Does everybody understand that? But when God brings it, it's totally different. In fact, God, when, when there's something that he's getting your attention to be ready because he's about to bring it to you. See, the enemy causes you to go after it. God brings it to you. There's a difference. First John chapter 5. Is everybody there? In verse 18. Hallelujah. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself. And the wicked one does not touch him. What does he keep himself? In the will of God, he keeps his heart steadfast. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one to influence a heart change. We know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from yourself, <laughs> from idols. Amen? Idols can be anything that is between you and God. Something more that you desire than God's presence. Amen. Don't let the enemy change your heart. And if you found your heart being changed, make sure you repent and turn quickly. Or you're on your way to destruction. Father, we thank you for your word and we thank you for your warning. Because we're seeing many hearts change these days. We ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace. We repent for any area where our hearts have changed. Influenced by the enemy. 
And we ask that we welcome the Holy Spirit to bring counsel, correction, and direction and turn our hearts towards you so that they will not drift away into any idolatrous, adulterous influence or lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, or pride. But that we, may, that we may remain a humble and submissive spirit to you, able to resist the attacks of the enemy. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.